Welcome back to Market Day Report. I'm Tony St. James. We started the morning kind of optimistic with some overnight trade looking like maybe our row crops were going to go north, i.e. in positive territory. It's not happening though. Let's start with corn. In Chicago, it's down a nickel now on the July at 445 and the December at 461 and three quarters, a full six cents off of the trade. Beans lower as well, though we are right in the middle of the range on that July contract at 1170. It's down four. Let's look at the August, though. It's ticking a little higher, but still in the red, down four and a quarter cents at 1151 and three quarters. And the November at 1126 and a half, it's off five and a half. Wheat market has also been lower as Chicago, July 573 and a quarter. It's off eight and three quarters. The deferreds 10 to 13 lower and hard red winter wheat has been uh, some double digit losses as well as we look at it at those 2025 contracts, but nine cents lower on July at 591 and three quarters. Spring wheat, Minneapolis, yep, it's there too. Double digit losses on all of the 2024 contracts, including July, 621 off 11 and three quarters. In New York, cotton futures are finding a little bit of optimism with the new crop, which starts with the December 24 contract at 72.88. It's up 12 points, but the deferreds, the uh, July, which is uh, set to, to close out soon, it's down 12 points, and the October lightly trading 73.50 off 32. Our special guest now, Ted Seifred, is with Zayner Ag Hedge. And uh, Ted, as, as we kind of talked this morning, there, there are a lot of different stories here. One story, too much moisture maybe along the Texas Gulf Coast, not enough moisture in other areas. We've got the heat to talk about. And we have a quarterly grain stocks report in a week, right? Yeah, Tony, I, this is the time of year where we have lots of volatility and we have lots of different things that we're looking at in the markets. Uh, right now, I mean, we're very focused on weather. Uh, we went from a really sloppy, wet planting season into what has become uh, a bit more hot and dry, especially in the east, which is now on the newly updated drought monitor showing up with a little bit of yellow happening in uh, Indiana also in Illinois and, and Missouri. So um, what a shift in weather. And, and the markets are nervous about that, uh, although we do keep getting these sort of pop-up storms that uh, we have a fairly low level of confidence on, and then they happen. And then you have corn you know, down five cents. Uh, and it's been a wild ride in corn this week, even with the, 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 the holiday in the middle of the week, which is not a very typical thing, by the way. Uh, but, you know, we were sharply lower Monday, then sharply higher, taking back all of the losses on Tuesday and short covering in front of a, uh, a holiday and not knowing what the forecast would say when we came back. Forecast didn't change much. And now we're down again. So very volatile. Um, markets will probably continue that way into next week. Like you said, quarterly grain stocks could be a big thing. There's something happening with old crop soybeans and whether that shows up in a surprisingly bullish quarterly grain stocks number for, for soybeans or not. I don't know, but the spreads are kind of suggesting that. Uh, and then acreage. Acreage is going to be a wild debate between now and next Friday because with the sloppy planting weather that we had, did we get all of the crop in is a big question mark. And then put that together with planting intentions came in about 6 million acres below expectations. Where did those acres go? Were those sure. acres still available to get planted? Could we end up seeing a higher number? And that debate's going to rage between now and next Friday. So lots of volatility ahead, I would think. Yeah, volatility and Quite a few questions. Speaking of questions, let's talk uh, what we could see on a Catalan feed report as well. We'll do livestock in just a moment on the Market Day Report. Welcome back to Market Day Report. Well, we've seen pressure in the row crops. What about the livestock? You know, the cattle market has been strong now over, well, the last few years. The big question, will we start rebuilding? We'll try to answer that question in a moment. June live cattle, though, in positive territory at 187.25, and that's up 57 and a half. 
The August contract up 62 at 182.72, and that's live cattle. Feeder cattle, we're watching up 57 on the August at 260.52, and the hog trade, well, that's they're all lower now. Uh, some some idea that we could see a bump higher in the front months, but that's disappeared here this morning. 92.85 on the July. It's off 92, buck 72 lower on the August 89.85. But let's switch from hogs back over to cattle. Cattle on feed report set to come out tomorrow. We have uh, Ted Seifried with us, and uh, Ted is, is he start trying to really close in on those numbers and find the bullseye. Will we have lower or higher on feed number? Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I kind of feel like this could be a little bit of a friendly cattle on feed report, but we will see. You know, generally speaking, Tony, we have this sort of profit taking or or long liquidation happening in front of cattle on feed that's happened forever, right? And and you feel like, you know, today's a day with corn being down again, giving up the gains from Tuesday. This would be a great opportunity for, for feeder cattle to really find some strength and challenge the recent highs. And it's not doing it. So that's a bit of a disappointment. But also recognize we do have this cattle on feed report coming up. So um, I, I'm taking today's cattle trade, cattle complex trade with a gain, grain of salt. Uh, we would liked the gains that we saw early, but we've given some of that back. And now we just kind of seem to be sitting and we might just kind of be sideways uh, going into Friday. Now, don't look at the hogs <laughs> because, man, has that been an equi equi um, uh, uh, just a, a, a tremendous slide that we've had coming off the, the April highs. But uh talk about long liquidation you know the funds had been really rather long that market i mean they they really just got out of all their positions we had gotten very oversold we had a reversal higher trying to find a bottom but then we've given a lot of the gains back here in the last couple of trade sessions it doesn't look great but the best thing that we can say about hogs is that maybe maybe this is the sort of volatility we see in an extreme maybe we're trying to carve out a bottom that's that's maybe what i like that so, Maybe. Yeah. I, I think I counted three different maybes there. So, Four, hey, th thanks for joining us today. Come back and see us soon, will you? Oh, uh, at my pleasure. Certainly will, Tony. Thank you for having me. Ed Seifred with Zayner Ag Hedge. And, you know, I noticed the treadmill back there. And yeah, it, it seems as though we have a cattle market just on the treadmill right now waiting for direction. Good analogy on that. And Colin and uh, Ted out on that. He's a lot of maybes. There's a lot of uncertainty still with this market. Absolutely. That's pretty much how it stands. Thank you, Tony.